Hey guys, and welcome to Let's Build a Village, part one, New Beginnings. Now, you may remember last episode, we turned the kingdom into kind of like a makeshift survival games map, which was kind of cool. But uh, we want this world to be something we're continually building on, building up, and, uh, and continue, continually adding to. And, and a large glass dome, constricting how we move and build, doesn't really help us with that goal. So while the Survival Games version of the world will remain as a standalone download, we're going to continue building on this world you see here that has no cornucopia and, and no glass dome. And this episode we're going to be uh, focusing on, of course, a village. The village. The first village. Perhaps the first of many. Who knows? Let's see. And, and before we build a village, we need a place to build it. Now, most of the area around the castle and around the kingdom is kind of congested, hilly, tree, full of trees, full of stuff that's in the way. So today we're going to be um, building out this side of the castle you see here and terraforming the land into something we can build on. Now the first order of the day was to build a way to get out of the kingdom and to the village that we're going to put uh, over there on the side. First up, we, uh, we added a grate to the side of the wall. This hooks up with the canal system inside the walls, so it's also a kind of sneaky way into the kingdom oh, under the cover of night. If you want to smuggle something in, you can do it through the canals. But, you know, it also adds a bit of decoration and neatens things up. It didn't make sense for there to be a river one side of the wall, a canal the other, and there not be any uh, interaction between the two. So once the grate was in place, we moved over here, demolished the wall, and, uh, and hooked up the road to uh, to a gate that we're going to put through this wall. You see me there adding the wooden fence posts as, as the portcullis and then carving out the dirt to put down the cobblestone steps and the cobblestone blocks that become the road that will take you to the village. And then building a shelter above the gate for the guards to hang out in while they're waiting on patrol just making sure no diseased villagers get into the kingdom. And then it was time to build a bridge out this side of our kingdom that will hook us up to the village itself. Now, I had to be simple with this bridge because this is going to a kind of a small, relatively poor village. With, within the kingdom, we could, we could afford to be very lavish with building materials we used. Lots of stone brick, lots of um, nether brick roofs and such. But I didn't want this bridge to be very expensive looking. It had to be a kind of simple, cheap farmer's bridge. So I stuck with wood for the most part, a simple uh, three block bridge, and every three blocks adding upside down wooden stairs, capping those with uh, wooden fences, and then adding uh, adding archways that were going to hold the lights. Now I built these, um, these dirt pillars on the bridge because I was going to use uh, jack-o'-lanterns to light the bridge. However, when I put those down, they didn't really interact with the fence posts very well. And I decided that what I wanted to use instead were these redstone lamps with uh, with levers on top, so they were relatively out of sight. Oh, and that sheep seems to have lost his way, gone onto our bridge, but thankfully he's off now. Bordering the sides with the uh, the wooden half blocks there, and uh, adding wooden blocks to give the bridge a bit more volume. Now, don't be alarmed, but you're about to see half of the map just disappear. And uh, this is because I'm using world edits to drag out a big empty space. I dragged out a big square, filled it with air, and then I converted the top layer that was left over into grass. And that gave us uh, that gave us a big, a big nice football field size place to uh, to play with. And here I'm using the brush tool in world edit to um, to make the edges a bit bit less rough and uh, look a bit more natural. Now, world edit is a, is a very powerful tool. It's also very dangerous to use. You can you can end up uh, really destroying your world if you just make the the smallest wrong move. And, and next episode, I will be showing you how to use World Edit as as a powerful terraforming and building tool. But for the time being, I just wanted to use it to create um, an open area for us to build our village. Mountain brushes on the side to give us a bit of hills, and uh, I carved out this man-made river that feeds into that large cave over there at the back. And with the area terraformed, with uh, with our football field marked out for us to build on, it was time to think about the first building. So I came up to the corner of the area, built up a bit with uh, with a brush tool to get a nice hill. I, uh, I cut off 
the top to give us an area to build on, and then I got the circles picture out to uh, to plan out a big circle for what would become a windmill. Now I wanted the bottom layer of the windmill to be stone, and uh, and then the top two thirds to be uh, to be wood. So what I did was uh, I used the dark stone brick there on the on the first layer, and then made uh, a circle one square smaller out of wood that would uh, that would then um, be built up to form the full height of our windmill. I was marking off the floors as I was going along as well as ever, every four blocks to keep a little bit of a consistency and scale in all the things we build, to make everything feel like it's the same size. That's very important when you're building a, a large project, is, is to maintain that sense of scale. And once I'd gone up, uh, I think, roughly two floors, perhaps three, I would uh, I marked off the areas left and right with these, uh, these red nether brick steps to give myself an idea of how I was going to peak this roof. I thought I could have made a kind of cone roof, but uh, it, didn't, it didn't seem right and it wouldn't work well, I, I didn't think, with, uh, with the way our windmill was going to work. So I, instead, I opted for a kind of flatter, two st sloped, slanted, two-sided roof. And then you hear me playing with World Edit to, uh, to change the colour of the wood there. I wanted the wood to be darker than, than, the, uh, than the standard wooden planks. So I shifted to the, the darkest uh, stained wood that I could. And then when the rain had stopped, I got back to working on the peaked roof. This had a slight overhang at the front, just to give it a bit more depth. And then I went about fleshing out the roof, finishing off with uh, nether brick steps and upside down nether brick steps. And then I came back, added the top layer with wood, and then I started to build the windmill blades themselves. Now with these I wanted to use um, stone, uh, wooden steps rather, upside down and, uh, and standard, before I put those in place because upside down wooden steps have to be placed on a block that's existing above them. So I, I mapped out the blades with uh, normal wooden blocks first and then switched to the, uh, the wooden steps, that made it much easier. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to use the white wool here to create the, uh, the sails of the windmill. So you see me tinkering around with uh, how they interact with the, uh, with the wooden blades. But in the end I gave them a slight, um, a slight narrowing at the centre and trimmed the edges slightly. And I touched up the door and the sides and the windows, adding some red fence posts as a bit of decoration and to give the, uh, the walls a bit more depth. And that was it. You see here the grate coming out from the canals, leading through underneath the peasant bridge to our village, a village that we'll have to name. So if you can think of any cool names for a village, be sure to leave them in the comments and, uh, and we'll stamp the best one on a big sign outside the front of our village. And then you see our big terraformed area, the hills we've created and crafted, the man-made river that cuts straight through the heart of it. This is where we're gonna put down the villages or the village rather, the buildings, the farms, the tavern, the town hall, all, all the traditional village buildings will be there. And here is a large windmill with, yes, check this out, we're using Ugo Craft to make the blades of the windmill turn. And doesn't it look impressive? You see there are the steps coming down the front of the windmill, leading straight to the door, which uh, you have to be quick. If you want to get into this windmill without being cut to pieces by the blades, you're going to have to time it right. Coming round, you see the red peaked roof. Now you see the windows, I've used wooden steps, normal way up, at the same level as, as the windows there, just to give it a slight bit of depth, but to, but to keep it the same shape, so that it didn't jut out. And then those red fence posts you see there, to give it a bit of colour variation, as well as depth to the structure. And there you have it, our windmill, our, our shining beacon at the top of that hill, the first building of our village which has yet to be named. So if you can think of a name, be sure to, uh, to put that in the comments and, uh, and, we'll, and we'll pick the best one and put it on a sign out the front. So I've been Stjin, thanks for watching Let's Build a Village Part 1 and uh, hopefully you'll hit subscribe and I'll see you next time when we, uh, when we perhaps go into the terraforming that we did earlier
have a look at world edit and i'll show you guys the ropes so i've been Shin. thanks for watching take care